Welcome back to Organize with Grace podcast. Do you feel like you're always struggling to get it together? Do you feel like you're burning the candle at both ends, feeling completely disorganized in your home and life, that it's starting to affect you mentally and emotionally? Well, you've come to the right place if you need encouragement, easy and simple organization tips, or you just want to know that you're not alone in this season of life. Hi, I'm Grace Ramon, your fellow working mom and professional organizer. I believe in you, friend. You can get it together. Now let's get organized. Hello and welcome back to Organize with Grace podcast. How are you all doing? Lately, I have been more picky about who I bring onto the show. And when Ashley Brown reached out to me to be a part of Organize with Grace, it was a no-brainer. And Ashley is from Baltimore, Maryland, and she's a mom of two, author of Routine, the Routine Building Handbook, and the owner of Routine and Things, which serves to help women get organized and into routine so they enjoy the heck out of life. Ashley knows when women feel good, the world is better for it. She's on a mission to see as many women as possible organize their life one routine at a time. Ashley, welcome to the show. Thank you for having (laughs) me, Grace. Oh, you're so sweet. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to chat. You're welcome. You're welcome. So first off, I love hearing my guest stories. So can you share with us how your journey began with eventually becoming the owner and founder of Routine and Things and now an author? I know it's it's been a wild ride, but it started back in 2019. Um, and really before that, I was a stay at home mom for about two and a half years. It started kind of in 2017 when my first daughter was born. I have two girls, ages three and five. And so when mm-hmm. my first daughter was born shortly after that, I became a stay at home mom. And I'm telling you, Grace, like what I thought it was going to be. It was uh-huh. not right. I had this definitely this like I feel like most women do. We have this expectation of what stay at home mom looks like. Although I didn't know any stay at home mom, I was raised by a single mom, single fam, single parent household. Me I didn't too. have any family mm-hmm. members that were stay at home moms. Everyone needed to work, and so I just assumed it was going to be a walk in the park. I'm like, we're gonna have a lot of fun. It's gonna be a walk in the park. Like if I can be a working mom and my life feels pretty good. Like I can be a stay home mom. It's going to be fine. No, that's not what happened. (laughs) That's not what happened. And honestly, I believe why I struggled in that role in the beginning is because I had a high expectation of what it was going to be. Right. It wasn't really realistic, the expectation I had, but also I was dealing with identity issues, like being a, going from being a working mom to a stay at home mom is completely different. And so wow, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a, like a busybody, a go getter, like high achiever as, as people call it. And so I was like, wait, I'm just home and like cleaning and like cooking and like, just, <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't know if this fits me. And so I was having this identity crisis, which really took me out of focus from what really mattered. And like, really my home fell apart at a certain time, like behind on everything, feeling like I was doing a lot, but not really doing anything. Um, Daughter just sitting around in her nineties all day, just, you know, watching TV while I'm sitting here trying to figure things out. Cause I also had started a, a food blog at the time. So like my focus had completely shifted from my home from really the intention I had when I came home to be a stay at home mom. So that's when I realized that I really sunk into a deep depression at the time, Mm -hmm. stayed there for a little bit, but I'm a huge God girl. So I prayed about it and I asked God to just, just help in this moment. And I feel like what God said was you just need better routines. Like that's what you like. I'm already naturally routine oriented, but I had never been really intentional about routines. They have always just fell into place. And so at that point I had to get very intentional little by little doing, starting to do routines one by one. And it was a lot of trial and error, let me say, but I started to figure out, Oh, these are the things that really work when it comes to routines. And so over time, life started to get better. Life started, I started to feel a lot better. And then yeah. when I looked up, I'm like, oh my gosh, like routines really helped me in a season yeah. where I really needed 
help. And so I knew from that point, I wanted to help women um, do the same for their lives. Wow. Wow. That's a great story. And so inspirational. And what I caught with that too, is that um, little by little and over time, and that's so key. And I love that you stayed with it. And now you've got Oh my goodness, like a, a business out of it too. And not just a business, but a business that makes a difference in people's lives. Exactly. You know, so, yeah. so yeah. So, well, you've answered my next question. Why, why do routines matter in our lives and see and hearing your story and see how, and seeing how, hearing how it play, put things into place for you. Right. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah. um, and so what are some, foundational aspects of routines that my listeners should know about. Mm -hmm, Exactly. First of all, I want everyone to know before I get into sharing a few things that I think are going to be really helpful for you. Mm -hmm. Routines are so beneficial. I know that, that we've heard this. This isn't new to anyone. A lot of people many times are in search of routines in certain parts of your life. It feels overwhelming, stressful. You feel disorganized. But however, I want for everyone to know routines are problem solvers for you. Like, I don't think many times we hear it in that way, but they solve problems, especially nice, consistent problems. If you have a consistent problem that keeps arising in your life, like you're always wake, going to bed super late, mm-hmm. or you are always rushing out the door in the morning, or your kids always are going to bed past 9.30 when you really want them to be in bed at 8.00 routines can help solve those consistent problems. So when you are thinking about routines, know that they are going to be solving a consistent problem for you and fulfilling a consistent desire that you have, right? For your kids to go to bed at a certain time, for you to get out of the door without rushing. So I want y'all to know that piece because I think that piece is missing. We just see it as, as order, which it does, but it's problem solving. Those are problem solvers for you. And in life, that's what we need. We need to be able to solve problems if we are going to manage life well. So that's one thing. So Um, insightful. So insightful, Ashley. Yeah, thank you for that. Yes, you're welcome. And when it comes to a routine, always share four considerations as you are deciding and trying to put this routine together. Four considerations you want to take into account is one, making sure your routine stays simple. We can get very overzealous when it comes to us starting routines and want to put a bunch of steps in them. Right. Really, especially as um, if you're a parent, like it's so important. And even if you're not, it's just so important to keep things simple in your life because life is complicated enough at times. You know, really keep it simple. That's the first one. The second thing to think about and consider is making sure that it's realistic. And this is a huge one because it needs to fit the season of life that you're in. It can't solve a problem mm-hmm. if it's not, if the problem isn't realistic to where you are today. Like you want to make sure that it fits you as a person, that it fits your season of life for your family. If that's what you're looking to do is use routines for your family. You want to make sure that it's realistic. Okay. And, and that just means, is it going to help you in this season? Right. So mm-hmm. that's the second thing. The third thing to consider is, can it be flexible? Is your routine, can you like adjust it a bit? And that could look like maybe the time you can change depending on what's going on, the time that you do the routine, you can change it or making your actions in your routine more broad than super specific that can lead to flexibility. So for example, if in your morning routine, you know, instead of saying, I'm going to do yoga, you can say, I'm going to move my body. That is a more flexible action. So it it it. helps you right? You can adjust. And then the last thing, and this is a huge one, fun. (laughs) Please, (laughs) please y'all have fun because we will miss this, especially, um, you know, we start getting older and then fun just goes away. No, it It is so important, right? It does. Just with the responsibilities of life, it just kind of makes us be really rigid or just also just like, no, I need to be super serious. And it's like, not at all times. Yes, certain situations we do need to be more serious, but fun needs to be involved in your routine because that is going to be a a great way for you to stay consistent with your routine. So those are the four considerations. Wow. That is amazing. That is amazing. And the way 
I mean, it sounds so like the what you how you've come up with it sounds so easy, but I know that it's through life experience that you've seen these four foundational things, right? And that how you've put it together and had and it's a part of your of who you are, of your brand, of your whole life. And I'm just so glad to hear it. And so with that, Ashley, so when we start our routine, a new routine, so let's just say, let's pick one like bedtime. What do many of us tend to make as far as mistakes when it comes to starting something new? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> even before you choosing, really the first mistake that I feel like we make is when we feel like we need routines in general or need a better routine, many times we'll focus, we'll like be very overzealous in a good way. It's like we're excited sure. because we're like, yeah, I'm about to make a change in my life. Things are going to start to feel better. <laughs> and so I feel like initially we're like, I need all of these routines. <laughs> and it's like, hold up. <laughs> it may feel like that but you don't need all of the routines right now. And it's not beneficial. You have to start one and like build one routine at a time and start that and get that going now. So that's the first thing. But like I said before, when we start our routine, a common mistake is we, we put way too much in the routine. Like we don't keep it simple enough. That's what I hear all the time from women I work with. It's like, Oh, this needs to be more simple. Okay, I get it. And I'm like, yes, it has to be more simple or you're not going to be able to maintain it if it has too many steps, right? If you can't easily recall your routine off of memory, it means it's too complicated. You need to be able to have it simple enough so you can easily recall it because that means that you're probably going to be more likely to keep it going. Um, Another mistake that I see made when it comes to routines when we're starting them is we compare and that's kind of can lead mm -hmm. us to putting things in our routines that don't really align with who we are. Or it's like, well, why, why do you want to do this in the, in your bedtime routine? Like, why do you want to journal when you have, you journaling is now don't even fit you. Like maybe you're more of a reader and you're like, I'm not journaling. Isn't my thing. Just because like, don't compare, you have to really make sure your routines fit you as a person. And no matter if what your neighbor does, your friend, your, your, your sister, I don't care. You have to think about what's going to fit you as a person and make sure that your routine aligns with that. So those are the common mistakes. It's, It's other ones, but those are definitely the major ones that I see people make when it comes to starting their routine. Yeah, that's I asked that specifically because we I like to let my listeners know, like, hey, I made these mistakes. I'm going to help you avoid them (laughs) and make it a little bit easier for you. So so thank you for sharing those. And now um, how how long what should our expectations be like? How long on average? I mean, I know there's different um, routines, different um, things throughout the day that we should be establishing as far as routine, like how long do we give ourselves time? Like, you know, how long does it take for us to like really establish one and Mm. um, where we feel like good about it? Like on average, like you've seen women like establish a routine or does it vary? It does vary for sure. But a routine, it doesn't take long for it to be established especially if it's a, a routine you're doing most days, like especially if it's like a daily routine you're doing, yeah. like a morning routine or a bedtime routine and you're doing it most days of the week, it can take like a month. Like I'm running an accelerator program right now and um, I have 30 women in there and they're creating a routine. They create the morning routine. We got that going for a month. Then we added on a bedtime routine. Well, we did the bedtime routine first and then we got that one going and then we added on the morning routine and getting that one going. And many of them were able to establish their bedtime routine within a month, but we're keeping it going while we're even starting the morning routine. So I always mm-hmm. share that it's about the consistency, but also about you not giving up when it doesn't go as Uh, smooth as you think it's going to go because there's always a chance for you to start again. So I see on average, it can be usually like a month 
Yeah, usually a month. And some people it's longer depending on what season of life that they're in or how often, if if it's like a weekly routine, that's going to be a little bit longer to set in place. But yeah, I would say on average, like maybe like 30 days, like a month. Yeah. And you're good. And even, even after that, even if you, your routine goes away for a bit, you can always start again. Like I always share that with people. Like it's no limit. Like just go ahead and start again, jump back into it. I love that. I love that. And, and now, yeah, with starting again, um, heading into that, you know, so let's say we've established a routine, we feel good about it. And then suddenly the wheels fall off because of unexpected life events, like a new job or hmm, asking for a friend Yeah, here. Right. I, I did recently um, start a new job. So yeah. So what do we do then? Like with our established routines? Yes. So with your routine, the, the good thing about it, if you know you're going to have a transition happen, or if you can, pre- like, if you can predict that something might throw off your routine, the great thing about it is you can then level your expectation during that time, right? Yeah, because nice. Right. Because I think that's a huge thing I see is that we do have high expectations in times where it's like, but there's a lot of transitioning going on. And I think we really and even just in general, I think we need to level our expectations in general in life because things are always going to come up. But especially during transitional times, like just now, like a lot of people back to school and like that's a really high transition time for a lot of people. And so it's like during that time, level your expectations. And if you can do that then getting back into the routine is going to be easier for you. But you may find that during that time, you might need to adjust your routine a bit. Like maybe, maybe not, but I think it's important to assess how is like, once you started again, assess how it's going. And even before, let me say this too. You can always like slowly reincorporate the routine into your life. Like, it doesn't have to be like, oh, I got out of the routine. And so now I'm going to do all four steps. It can be like, okay, let me start with the first two steps in my routine. Let me get that going a little bit just to ease myself back into the routine. And then eventually I can add back all of the steps and start to do it again. So that's something to think about as well, because it can feel like just overwhelming when you stop doing something. Our mind kind of, we just have to get to a point of, (laughs) It's like our mind is like, oh, my gosh, I've been out of this for a while. So how am I going to get back into it? And it's like, just start. But if you slowly Uh start, it's not going to be as much of a hurdle if you like slowly reincorporate the routine. So even like if you've been out of exercise, for example, because this happens to me, you get sick, something happens, children get sick, you get out of the routine, whatever. What I do is I'll be like, okay. I'm going to just turn on a dance video and like dance for 10 minutes. That's the, that's going to be my exercise for today. Just to kind of slowly ease me back into exercising so that I, cause maybe I was doing hit workouts and I'm like, wait, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this right now. (laughs) So let me just do 10 minutes of dance. I'm going to be, this is going to feel good. And then it just kind of re-energizes you and it can get you back into your routine as well. So just level your expectations, know that things are going to come up. But that's not a that's not giving you permission to just let it go. It's like giving you permission yeah. to adjust to what's going on and just slowly reincorporate it back. And I love it. it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And I'm going to be segueing after this question into um a planning method that you have and want to share. And before that, like share with us. You know, what are, what is the difference between a habit and a routine and how, how are they different and how are they, um, are they similar? Can you let us know more about that? They are definitely similar. I'll start with how they're different. So Mm -hmm. habits are more automatic. They are things that you really don't have to think about. They just happen just because you've done 
the action over and over and over. It's kind of like when you're driving to working as your own autopilot. Like you're not really paying attention, but you're kind of, like you kind of, you know, like like you can be doing something else. And you're like, wait, I turned and I didn't even remember turning. Like yeah. that, like that's a, like that's it's got become habitual for you. So it's like more automatic. Routines are not automatic. Now they can become that way depending on what type of routine you're doing. If it's super simple, they can become automatic over time. But what I typically see is that they're not automatic. We still have to think when we're going about doing the routine. And so that's how they're different. Now, how they're similar is that they are consistent actions you're doing. So the consistency is the similarity. And I For me, I know that consistency, I always say, is a superpower. If you can get good at being consistent with anything, which all of us are consistent. That's why I want people to know. A lot of us think that we're not consistent, but we consistently do a lot of things every day. And so, but it's a superpower. And if you can take in one way that you're consistent and move that to another area of your life and like transfer those skills I'm telling you, your life changes when you do certain actions consistently for you, especially actions that are putting you in alignment with yourself, with what you want out of life and keeping you on track with how you want your life to feel. It it changes the game. So that's how habits and routines are different. And so, yeah, I get asked that question all the time and they are different, though, but they do have similarities. And it really just depends on what you're looking for. Always, always will share like. Some people do want to create habits and I always ask them like, why, why do you, why do you want it to be automatic? Like maybe just yeah. start with a routine sure. and then eventually it might lead to you having that habit. Um, and so, yeah, but I, I do like habits too, even though I have a bad habit of biting my nails, which I'm actually doing well with right now. Yay! <laughs> I know. I we know. Have oh our own gosh. thing. Right. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But we, yeah. we keep working at it, right? Right. Exactly. And, and now that, yeah, that leads me to ask, you are, um, you are getting to ready to roll out, right? A yeah. get organized using the routine block planning method. So can you tell us more about that? Yes. Yeah. So I'm super excited about the planner. The routine and things planner is our first yearly planner coming out October 5th. And inside the planner, um, I have our routine and things like planning process. And a part of that planning process is the routine block planning method. And so I'm super excited about this because I feel like it's going to be revolutionary in such a simplistic way, but I really do. (laughs) So basically what the routine block planning method is, is where you organize your daily tasks into four routine categories, self-care, family, cleaning, and cooking. And if you think about it, all of four of those categories are things that we're thinking about on a regular basis already. So why not plan within those categories to keep us focused? Because also when transitions are happening, when life just starts to get a little bit more stressful, those things also get lost in the shuffle. And that's what makes us start to become more overwhelmed and feel very disorganized. When we are not doing our self-care, we start being like, why am I more moody or why am I not feeling good? It's because you, yeah. you're not, you're not doing that part. That part has went away. Or when we get behind on cleaning, we're we're starting to stress because the house looks a mess, or clothes aren't washed, and we're trying to figure out what the kids are wearing for school. When we are eating out more than what we would like, because we're spent and we're like, my money is getting eaten up by right? <laughs> by eating out, or just it's not as healthy as I would like for us to be eating. That makes us feel even more scattered. It makes us feel, and we have this internal conflict. And so I want for the routine block planning method to really help women stay focused on these four categories, these four routines that when you have these and you're managing them well and you're staying focused on them, you're automatically going to feel better in your life. And so that's what the routine block planning method is. And I think that just overall, it's going to be fantastic. It's great at helping you become a good steward of your time and energy. It's going to be really good at promoting self-care for you. The first block of this method is self-care. So you're not skipping over yourself. That's the first thing you're going to be planning is what are you doing for you? Because you have to be able to, you know, 
think about your wellness so that you can be well in your life just in general. But also as you're managing all that life offers, you want to feel good in doing that. And so I'm super excited about it. I think it's going to be awesome for for women and just people. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds very, very exciting. And I'm as I'm listening to you, I it's it looks like no matter what, stay at home mom or working mom, it will work, right? Yes, it will work. It does not matter. Mm -hmm. It will work for both. Yes, because these four routine categories are the things that we're thinking about, no matter if you're a stay at home mom, work from home mom, work outside of the home mom, it doesn't matter. And um, the planner is also going to include areas for you to put in work things if you want. And um, I'm super excited. I'm super excited about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Ashley. Yeah. I am excited as well. And um, you said it was coming out on what is October it? October fifth. October fifth. Yes. Yay! Yes. October fifth. And most likely the it. I'm. I made the posting of this um, episode maybe around that time or a little bit before that, so that um, my listeners can you know get Yay. get a. Uh, an update on how to get that. And so speaking of how can my listeners find you? I know that you have a podcast of your own. So can you tell us about that? And then some other channels that they can um, connect with you on? Yes. Yeah, so my podcast is the routine and things podcast. So you can definitely check that out. It's available on any podcast player, um, as well as our website, routine and things.com. So that's where everything is housed. If you want to check out products, the podcast, go to routine and things.com. And then also follow me on Instagram. I love um, connecting on Instagram at routine and things. Awesome. Awesome. What a fun and educational interview at the same time. So thank you, Ashley, for for your time here and for telling us about routines and how much it benefits us. Oh, thank you so much, Grace, for having me. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. You're welcome. Hey, real quick, if you enjoyed today's episode, the best way to thank me is by leaving an iTunes review. If you're listening to me right now on your iPhone, simply scroll down, click write a review within the podcast, and voila, you'll get a chance to click five stars and type in how the podcast has helped you. You can also access iTunes on your computer if you're not an iPhone user by downloading the iTunes app. Also, I offer virtual organizing, and that means we get to hop on Zoom together wherever you are and I can help you organize your space for a fraction of a price that you would spend hiring an in-person organizer. Contact me by email, hello at organizewithgrace.com so you and I can get started. I offer a free 15-minute assessment to see if we're a good match to work together. So get on it, girl. Stop being stuck on your organizing journey. I'll help you walk forward so you can finish that organizing project that you've been procrastinating on. No judgment here. I've done it myself, but you know what I'm talking about, girl. All right. Can't wait to talk to you. Bye.